Hello everyone, welcome to my first video of my new video series called Tips and Tricks with Planet Coaster. Today I'll be showing everyone how to create realistic mountains using different techniques with terrain editing tools. Let's go ahead and get started. So first I'm going to be increasing the intensity of the brush. Uh, and I'm also using the, the brackets here to increase keyboard brackets to increase and lower the brush size. And I'm basically what right now I'm just going to try and get a nice base going here. And this base is going to determine kind of the thickness of how much you want, the, like how thick you want the mountain, uh, how close you want to the path and everything. We're just gonna kind of bring out these sides here, just kind of give this nice gradual uh, hill increase. And uh, don't worry too much about it. We just want to try and build up the mountain. And we'll be doing all the tweaking soon. And uh, with some of these tools, it actually you can actually get some really nice uh, terrain effects, such as like the terracing and. Uh, erosion coming down the coming down the mountain and everything so I'm actually gonna lower the size a little bit more to kind of have make it a little smaller towards the top um, not trying to build a volcano so let's try and stick to more of a traditional mountain I'm gonna try and move this out a little bit more I mean of course you're gonna the way I usually do this is I kind of start out with that volcano-ish looking cone shape. So, uh, when I start going to detailing them, I actually use the chisel tool to lop different sides off and uh, kind of give it this nice, sharp looking uh, effect. And it is getting dark because I forgot to pause the game. So I'm just going to speed that up and... I'll let that go through while I'm just basing everything out here now. And once it gets laid out again, I'll go ahead and start doing the detail work right now. Still just want to kind of get this overall shape done. Um, look at the profile, kind of line it up with the moon there. You know, when you have your guests entering the park, you always want to have a nice looking profile to this, this mountain. You know, it's the first vocal point that they're going to see. So you want to make a look, you know, as nice as possible. Um, I don't like how this kind of curves up here. So I'm just going to kind of bring down a little bit more and stay with back here. Down a little bit more. Same here. Doing nice gradual slides. Now that's already looking a little bit better, a little bit more interesting, but uh, we definitely want to get more of a jagged look to it, more of a you know, Mount Everest type of look. So, that and tweak that a little bit more here. Right now, I'm just kind of adding in a little extra detail, uh, a little extra shape and deformation. So, uh, when you're looking at it, uh, you're going to see kind of like this little bit of an indention, indentation here uh, to kind of separate from that hill look. Uh, same with here. here. And you want it to kind of to have this nice, nice gradual fall off. So... That down a little bit more and off the top here. Okay. We're going to go ahead and pause it. And then uh, what I do here is I'm going to switch over to flat and ride foundation. And this is going to give us a nice terracing effect. You got to be really careful with this because all you really want to do is just kind of quickly tap 
your left mouse button. Uh, otherwise, you can get drastic results. And uh, when I when I say drastic, I mean this. We don't want that. Uh, when I say tap, we want something like this. Nice, quick, subtle, little terraces. And I'm gonna try to want to just break up that roundness. You know, that's the main goal here is to remove the roundness out of the mountain, so that way it has a more natural feel to it. Now, if you want to make round mountains, that's fine. You know, to each his own. Uh, personally, they drive me insane unless there's they're not covered by trees. Uh, I live in Pennsylvania, so I'm constantly surrounded by mountains. And yeah, our mountains around here are very like the way they are in the distance. They're just covered by trees. Uh, you know, when I'm entering a park, though, I want to be, and I see a mountain, I want to be awed by how uh, amazing that mountain looks. I know it sounds weird, but Mount Everest, uh, it would be a perfect example from Animal Kingdom. So now we have this nice little terraced effect. kind of looks like. Uh, something you would see in Mexico or uh, one of those archaeological dig sites. Um, we're going to go ahead now and use the chisel tool. Now, I love this tool because when I was talking earlier about lopping things off, that's exactly what we're going to go ahead and do now. Uh, this tool is really effective when it's set to the maximum size. So, uh, right now what I'm going to go and do is just start from the top and lop things off and already see right there in a nice taking that terracing and we're just breaking it down like they're like erosion the you know the water kind of flowing off from the rain and everything and you know kind of breaking the rock apart uh and giving this nice kind of gradual look digging the digging the ground in now already up here like I could probably terrace this a little bit more I'm gonna wait until we're done with the rest of it and then I'll focus on the top to kind of flatten things out so I'm gonna continue through here um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and change the surface lock get a little bit more of an extreme setup here so I'm already really liking this. We're definitely losing some of that terracing effect though, so I may have done it a little bit more than I probably should, but you know, right now we're still really we're still just basing everything out. So once again, we go back into our flat foundation and uh, starting from here up, I'm just gonna kind of give us a nice terrace again. That way we can kind of break out from the so you really gotta kind of just tap it there we go. Oop. that was drastic okay there we go I'm uh, just gonna look for some more flat areas just to make sure that everything's covered like right here probably wanna uh, no Turn the intensity down a little bit. Alright. Do it up here too. Because. Alright. So, I mean, already that looks so much better than just a round hill. But. I want to kind of go in here again with this chisel tool. Uh, kind of. Make everything have like an erosion to it, and uh, start focusing on particular areas. Turn the size down, and uh, start really getting into this, really digging out certain things. I'll focus on one area and then kind of go into it. 
So. I'll we'll probably go ahead and do another giant lop with this and then one more terracing effect when we're all done just to give more of a natural look to it. So right now this is still kind of just blocking in, blocking in the basic shapes. Uh, this would probably be the final block in though before we really get down to uh, creating everything that we really want to create. So like here I'm kind of Going in here, popping off some of this. Like I said, drastic, drastic changes once you get into the chisel tool. Uh, got that basic shape done. And now we're just going to focus on some of these areas here. And where was that? Or I said I wanted it indented. Okay, so. In here, because I really want this indented, I'm just going to completely go in and try not to lose it. <laughs> Let's try and go down, free angle, and press T and go free form. I don't want to lose, don't want to lose this angle right here. I want to try and keep that. I may actually even go to flatten the surface, so that way we can keep that surface area. And go back to chisel. Um, and I don't like how that's looking right now, so I'm just going to go back and just real quick. Like I said, we will be doing another terrace hit around the mountain again uh, to kind of bring everything in more detail so that things don't look flat. Um, but, and then of course, we're also fix the surrounding terrain too so our rides and paths and everything makes sense uh, when going around the mountain but already I mean you know we can definitely see how much different this is switch back to camera mode here um, we're getting some nice unique shapes now going on here this is a little weird up top so kind of you know, fix it and I mean, every time you do this, you're always going to get like a different result as you go through it. Uh, you know, I've done a lot of these already. So when I say a lot, I mean like five or six, but not that much. I'm still kind of learning what works best with what, but uh, overall, I kind of like this little setup of techniques that I discovered. You know, and I'm sure there's a better way of doing everything. You know, someone's going to come around and be like, oh, hey, you know, there's a lot of easier way to do this. Or, you know, oh, you should really look into doing this. And, you know, what? yeah, that's, you know, when that time comes and that's better, then, you know, I'll definitely incorporate those techniques into my design uh, and try things out. But right now, really, really like that. Really like that. So once more, I'm going to go ahead and do that terracing effect and increase the brush size all the way up. And we're going to just tap it again and change the intensity all the way up just because we want really drastic results uh, as, far, as far as the flattening goes. And uh, I don't want to flatten like too far up top, probably up to about right here. And then keep the rest of this like more hardened rock formation. So yeah, so right there already. Love that. Go ahead and we're going to come over here a little bit. Okay, and that is it. I am not touching that side anymore. I'm going to come over to this other side and definitely want to fix some of this up here. So I'm going to come there. Love that. Love that. And I love that. Okay, so right here are nice flat areas. We're going to go ahead and change that up now too. Not that though. Um, I don't want to go have the terracing effect going all the way around. I think I'm just going to leave that. Come down here in the bottom. Stop. 
And then right here, definitely, this is where I want to hit the most. Here, here, and down there. All right, so trying to fix this up a little bit now. train flattened out a little bit and then now the last little bit of detail that we're going to go ahead and do uh is oh, too much the last little bit of detail that we're going to be able to go ahead and do now is just kind of smooth out some of these areas uh we kind of have this distortion effect because of how jaggy the train has become when doing the chisel tool we're just going to come here we're just going to lower the intensity because i don't want to get rid of that jagginess because it it adds a little bit of depth and um sharpness to it so we're just going to nice and easy kind of tap at it uh dab would probably be the most appropriate thing to say Gonna dab at it with the mouse and already i love how these shadows are coming into place um they could be a little bit cleaner but we're gonna probably add a little bit more of a smooth at and gradually have less of a smooth as you go further up the mountain that's how it should be and Yeah, so now that we pretty much did this mountain, uh, I kind of want to share with you guys a little additional tip. Um, building coasters inside mountains. Redefined mountains, like having a mountain like this and then building a coast into it, extremely, extremely difficult. You're constantly having to figure out where you are within the mountain, uh, you know, figuring out how the layout is going to be, how the track's going to go up, uh, if it's going to go up along the side, if it's going to if it's going to go in, um, etc. And you know what? Honestly, it's so much better to just lay down the track first, figure out how the track's going to look, what the full layout of the track is going to be, and then builds the train up around it and the train actually beautifully goes around the track and then if you want areas opens uh you can do so so i'm not going to touch too much more on that but uh, i will probably be uploading a video on building terrain with the coaster i just really wish they had like a runaway train or like a mount everest type thing where he has like the Nice little bits that allow the track to the train to go forward and then backwards and forward again. And you know, I'd love to see that. Uh, you know, as an added feature later on, especially in that type of coaster setup. So uh, now I basically just went ahead while I was talking and used the the, th the thicker rock tool. It gives it more of a bump. And just kind of dabbed at it again. You know, we want, you know, as the mountain gets higher, the elevation in the auction becomes a lot thinner. Therefore, the grass is going to be, there's not going to be very much life or grass or trees or anything up towards the top of the mountain. And that's the illusion we want to try and create. Uh, is that the mountain's a lot taller than it actually is because, well, it's a themed fantasy or it's a themed park. You know, you want to create the illusion that things are much bigger than they actually are. Now, I mean, this is pretty big. You know, if we take, for example, our little uh, guy right here and use him as a scale su a scale reference. I mean, this is what we're looking at. 
we're looking at that size and that to me I think is perfect for a coaster size uh, it's perfect for you know a center point in the park so let's go ahead and uh, out of this camera mode go ahead and take a look at it kind of showing off everything all the sides really I really like it I mean up here if you really want to start getting into it a little bit more you, I probably would round a little bit of this off so it's not so rounded off of top um but I mean honestly it's not that pretty nice looking definitely achieves that overall realistic mountain look that we were looking for so let's go ahead and we'll see when we'll see what it looks like when we enter the park and yeah that's what you're gonna see now unfortunately with the level of detail uh, or the LODs if anyone doesn't know what an LOD is it is level of detail and uh, Things tend to look have a lot less detail from a further distance uh, what it is is the game actually generates less blocks or less uh, basically less uh, sorry, I'm having a brain fart here um, polygons uh, every polygon on an object like this terrain here is there's quite a there's quite a few um you know I, there's at least a couple thousand polygons which are basically little squares uh that allow us to kind of create that deformation and everything like that um so as you get further away the polygons begin to it goes from a thousand to say 500 and then from 500 to 200 and then from 200 to 100 which is drastic but i'm using an example so the further away you get it becomes less processor intensive on your machine same thing with textures uh textures get swapped out the closer you get to it you're looking at like a 2048 texture uh the further away from you get you can go all the way down to uh 250 256 texture i believe it's 256 correct me if i'm wrong um other than that i mean this is you know just some little Things I've learned over the years, uh, working inside like 3D sculpting programs, Mudbox, 3D, well not 3D Studio Max, sorry, uh, ZBrush, especially ZBrush, you know, we used a similar tool uh, called the Scrape Tool to create the rocks and get those those jagged effects, uh, which is one of the reasons I love having that chisel tool, you know, in this, so, yeah, um, uh, if you like this video go ahead and like comment uh, and if you are looking forward to seeing more videos go ahead and subscribe and thank you and have a wonderful day